an aerial threat that can kill and eat its prey in the bat of an eye. A subterranean dweller whose lair is lined with the bones of its enemies. This killer cutie will fly like an arrow straight into your heart. This is the belted kingfisher. Hi, my name is Aranya and you're watching Animal Logic's World of Birds. Today, we're looking for the one, the only, the belted kingfisher. You've got to keep your ears open for this one. You might just hear it rattle right on by. But before we go birding, let me tell you about this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. Listen, everybody has moments where they feel as blue as the belted kingfisher looks, which is why you might want to check out our video sponsor, BetterHelp. If there's something that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your dreams, try BetterHelp. They assess your needs and match you up with your own licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp isn't a crisis line or self-help. It's a professional and secure online network of counselors who offer a wide range of expertise. And it's available all over the world. You can log in to your account anytime, send a message to your counselor, and get a timely, thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. No more awkward waiting rooms. BetterHelp wants to match you with a great therapist, so it's easy and free to switch counselors if you need. It's also more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and they offer financial aid. So visit betterhelp.com slash animal logic. That's betterhelp.com and join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. For Animal Logic fans, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash animal logic. Start living a happier life today. Belted kingfishers are extremely successful predatory birds. There are over a hundred species of kingfisher distributed all over the world. As long as there's a body of water, and it's not frozen, they're likely to be there. Not all kingfishers like wetland areas. There are some kingfishers that you'll find mostly in wooded or forested areas. Now I know what you're saying, they have fish in their name though, where are they getting this fish? Well, not all kingfishers eat fish. They can eat grasshoppers, invertebrates, and some have been seen eating berries. King Picker just doesn't quite have the same ring to it if you ask me. They vary greatly in appearance. They can be minuscule colorful cuties such as the wonderfully dapper dwarf oriental kingfisher. Or they can be large and puppet-like such as the laughing kookaburra. So kingfishers are actually quite easy to find, mostly because of their rattle. So you'll hear a kingfisher before you'll see one. But today, we're taking a look at the fisher king of the Americas, the belted kingfisher. Their range is immense, and they can be found from Alaska to Venezuela, though North America is where they reign supreme. Canada is a productive breeding ground, and they've managed to fill nearly every river and lake. Their ubiquity has turned them into icons, and their image was used to adorn the $5 bill. Until they were bumped for some kids on a toboggan. So today, we're at the shores of Lake Ontario, looking for our local kingfisher. What'd you like see? Popped off the nest. It looks like What'd a you see? Oh, I saw a baby red winged blackbird. It's still got little tufts around its eyes, and its wings are so tiny. It really wasn't that hard to find them due to their loud and unmistakable call. And of course, their unmistakable look, from which they get their name. For these belted kingfisher, it's females that have that characteristic orange belt. The males are just a nice, bright blue. They have a white face and a blue-gray band across their chest. In most bird species, males are the colorful ones, as they use their fancy outfits to attract females, while females are usually more dull-looking, but have better camouflage. 
The fact that kingfisher males are less brightly colored than females is actually an unusual event in the bird kingdom. This area right here is prime kingfisher territory. It has clear shallow water and trees directly above it. Kingfishers, as their name suggests, are OP fishermen. Their strategy consists of perching above the water, and when they see a viable fish or crustacean, they dive for it. Belted kingfishers can also hover above the water when there aren't any good perching trees around. But in this case, this area offers all the branches they need. Their eyes are like telescopes that can spot very small prey from up to 100 meters away. Each eye has two foveas. One is used to spot the prey. It sends a lot of information to the brain to help account for the refraction in the water, so they never miss. The other is better adapted to see underwater, allowing them to adjust their course upon entry. Inside of their eyeballs, they have special oils, which are thought to reduce glare, helping them better spot fish underwater. And since their eyes are crucial to their survival, they protect them while diving, with a semi-translucent third eyelid. While looking for food, they're very territorial, and will let you know when you're cramping their style. Like I mentioned, the kingfisher is known for its rattle, but when you spook a kingfisher enough or you make it angry enough, there is another sign. The kingfisher will raise its crest. Maybe that's to make itself look bigger. Another thing, they have these little white patches right by their eyes. Even those get raised when the kingfishers are angry. They're really telling you to back off. Once the coast is clear and their prey is spotted, they dive. During their descent, they can reach speeds of 40 kilometers an hour. Their long beaks break the surface tension of the water and their slender bodies become hydrodynamic once they hit the water. Even their crest is slicked back to maximize speed. The result is a feathered torpedo of death. The fish won't even know what hit it. They take their fish to a tree and smack it around to kill it. Then they flick it up with a twirl so they can swallow it in a single gulp. Finally, like any good fisher, it cleans off its beak. The kingfisher takes great care of its weapon of choice. Belted kingfishers aren't huge. At most, they can get up to 35 centimeters in length. And yet, they can catch fish larger than that. When they catch fish longer than themselves, they swallow half of it, while keeping the rest hanging out of their mouth. Once the gastric juices have done their magic and dissolved the first half, they swallow the rest. After all the good stuff has been digested, they regurgitate pellets with all the bones, claws, and other non-digestible material. The Queen of England might not be impressed with their manners, but we'll just have to see who wins that evolutionary battle. These pellets have a secondary purpose beyond making room for more fish meat. They're also great construction material. Belted kingfishers are known to nest in banks and burrows. That's similar to what bank swallows do. What kingfishers do though, is they dig a little burrow in the bank and then create it in an upward slope. In case the water levels rise too high and water gets in, the babies will be protected in a nice, comfy air pocket that the kingfisher mama has built for it. The egg chamber is lined with the bone pellets as a form of insulation. That's right. Belted kingfishers line their burrows with the bones of their prey. It's the stinkiest nursery in the world. But it's surprisingly effective, and chicks become independent at just a month of age, starting out with catching small invertebrates and then moving on to catching fish on the shores of your local watering hole. Ah, seems like a nice life. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. Keep soaring to new heights. See you later. Bye.